Hello, everyone. This is Clay from the Fishers. Before we begin, a little disclaimer time. We recorded most of this episode inside an ice shanty on Silver Lake in Madison, New Hampshire, uh, arguably the worst lake uh, ever, uh, anywhere. Uh, it was negative five outside with a giant wind, uh, and, and the sound on this episode is a little cringeworthy at times, uh, and so is our language. So if you have a problem with uh, wind and noisy areas, noisy microphones and and uh, walls shaking, uh, this may not be the show for you, but if you are okay with that and some bad words as well as some belching, uh, this is the episode for you. This episode's not our brightest or smartest show we've ever done, but uh I think it's still a lot of fun, so I hope you enjoy it, uh, and next week, I promise, we will be back to our regular nerdy self, and now, on with the show. Welcome to the Fish Nerds, the show about fish, fishing, and eating fish. I'm Clay Grove, Chief Executive Fish Nerd of the Podcast. Recording live today from our shanty on Silver Lake. It is freezing cold. It's windy. Uh, and we're hanging out in the shack recording. I've got with me Damon. Damon, say hi. Hello. Vinny. Hey, hello. And just outside is the one and only Rich Collins. He'll be in in just a minute. Tonight on the podcast, uh, we are going to talk about cusk fishing with uh, with Damon here in a little bit. And we have got a our second annual tinned fish challenge we're going to do uh, in just a few minutes. Rich Collins is here. Rich, say hi. Ah, so cold. So cold. And uh, yeah, it's, it's it's impossible to fish outside right now because it's it's so windy. What's it like outside, Rich? Hell on earth and no fish. If, if hell was cold, it would be hell on earth. <laughs> it's so cold it feels hot. Everything hurts. Oh my god. Yeah, everything hurts. Hey, speaking of pain. What is the uh, actual temperature? <laughs> I'm looking up on my phone stand. It's not that bad. It's like 12, and it said a uh, real feel of negative 2, which, no, it's balmy. It feels worse than that. Hey, speaking of uh, death on the ice, this episode is brought to you <laughs> by Health IQ, <laughs> the, <laughs> the life insurance company for people who live healthy lifestyles. If, uh, if you're a runner, a vegan, a uh, fisher person, and you don't spend time on the ice, you likely can get a great deal on life insurance from Health IQ. Just uh, go to healthiq.com slash FNFP, Fish Nerds Fishing Podcast, give them uh, answer a quiz, and they will tell you if you qualify. So uh, before you head on the ice this winter, make sure that you get your life insurance <laughs> from Health IQ. <laughs> it's hard to get insurance if you're out uh, on days like this. Okay, don't on the quiz. It says if you go out fishing uh, with the fish nerds on days like today, don't don't take the quiz today. First story is from the fisheries blog dot com. Answering the big question. This is by Abigail Lynch. Can fish get fat? Uh, those who fish with the fish nerds know for sure fish get fat because we catch the fat fish. Uh, the holidays are over. No more cookies. No more eggnog. No more latke, whatever that is, and fruitcake. No more hollow goodies. Well, unless you count the extra pudge that I'm carrying around as a result of that delicious festive fudge. So the question that we're asking here is can fish get fat and... Abby says, yes, depending on diet, fish can have varying levels of fat deposits, and some fish can be chubbier than others, as we know. In nature, overweight fish are uncommon because fish generally live in food-limited environments. They eat when they have access to food uh, because their next meal may not be for quite some time. Fish will store some fat deposits to prepare for long periods of fasting. In fact, certain salmon runs are renowned for their decadent flavor, which is a result of higher fat stores. Uh, provisions intended to last through a long migration to their spawning ground. So, yeah, they can. Um, interestingly, in aquarium fish, um, overfeeding definitely results in obesity. According to a Chapman study in 2007, uh, pet fish uh, evolved as wild fish to eat as much as they can, clean their plates, and eat anything and everything which they have access to. Uh, and so aquarium fish will eat, but their abdomen, abdomen doesn't swell. They store their fat kind of under their skin. So too much too much food can 
definitely uh, cause your fish to get fat. And all these studies are done on zebra fish, which is, I think, the most common fish to do these studies on. Uh, it must be like that, the one fish that scientists go to. So, yeah, fish can, in fact, get fat. And speaking of fat fish, <laughs> transition time. And I lost my news story. Speaking of fat fish, and we're going to go back to New Hampshire here for some fat fish news. And this is from the Menadnock Ledger Transcript. Women drives over Hancock fishing site destroying equipment. Um, this happened out in the Menadnock region, southwest part of New Hampshire, Peterborough area. And uh, this actually says James DeRosers is out $500 in fishing equipment after a driver ran through the site where he was fishing with his two children on Sunday. DeRosers of Peterborough and his 20-year-old son and 11-year-old daughter were getting in a little fishing fun before the Super Bowl on a half-moon pond in Hancock uh, when, when a driver drove through his equipment. Um, I was reading the story and I decided, you know what, I'm going to skip all this. I know James. And so I got James on the phone and asked him myself about this incident here by phone, live, recorded last week, <laughs> is James DeRosers. James, up next. I'm on the phone with the world famous from New Hampshire, uh, James DeRosers. James got famous this week because a crazy lady tried to run him and his family over with a car while ice fishing. James, welcome to the podcast. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Hey, good. So first of all, before we get into um, what happened with, with crazy driver lady, which we definitely want to talk about, you live over in the Monadnock region in New Hampshire. What town are you from? I'm from Peterborough. Peterborough. I love Peterborough. Yeah, Beautiful it's a nice town. little town. Yeah, it's fantastic. You live down in Manchester and do a lot of fishing out your way, so it's really great. 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 Um, and you, you're a big ice fisher person. I've been following you online for a long time. You've got a really cool ice shack. You're always you're very active in all the online communities. You catch a lot of cool fish, uh, and you fish yeah, with your family, do. which is really important. So um, what's your favorite fish to catch? Um, well, I like to go fillet trout, but, you know, with kids involved, I want to keep it, you know, action-packed. And as long as yeah. my kids are having a good time, it doesn't matter what we catch. And, and so do you eat the fish you catch? Uh, the only thing that we eat is the perch that we catch. You Both white and yellow? Um, I'd like to get into some whites, but right now it's just yellows. Just yellows, and they're delicious. They are delicious. All right, and that brings us into what happened. So you're ice fishing with your family. Was this past Sunday? This was Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday. You got it. So before the big game, uh, now yep. are you a Patriots or Eagles person? I'm Patriots 100%. Dare I ask? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, we are in New Hampshire. So um, so you're fishing with your family on Sunday. You're having a good time. It's, Sunday was a beautiful day, too. It was warm. Um, good day to be on the ice. And it was, snow it was snowing like crazy where we were. Really? Because I, yeah. I was guiding and it was sunny. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> funny in one state how different the weather can be. So it was you snowing it. down there. And you're fishing with your kids. And what happened? So, yeah, we were fishing. And... Um, it, it's kind of weird the way I have to set my bob house up this year because of the the primary wind comes from one direction on that lake, and I, I got sick of my door slamming open. So mm -hmm. um, we have it facing in, in a weird direction. And I, I actually thought it was someone walking by my bob house. And when I looked out the window, I, I, I see this car out there, and, and she, she's doing donuts. You know, it's, it's, it's not abnormal <laughs> to see cars out here, out, out right. on the lake, you know, teenagers doing donuts and whatnot. But, you know, I, I'm like, wow, that, you know, it's strange because we're the only ones that have driven out there this year. Right. So. And she wasn't in a truck. She was in a, in like a CRV. And it was, oh, she yeah, she was in a CRV and, and yeah. she, she actually drove through the woods over logs and everything. So, hmm. you know, so my daughter. She's 11, and she says, hey, Dad, she just ran over your tip-ups. And I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> so, you know, and at this point, I, di I didn't know it was a woman. Uh, you know, right. I, I just thought, it, again, I thought, it, I thought it was a teenager. Right. So, you know, instantly at $45 a piece, I kick the door open in the bob house, and I run out there, you know, like like some madman. And I'm like, hey. And she, she drives by me, and she, the car is redlining because she's spinning those tires so fast. She actually hit the rev limiter. She drove by me, 
the first time and flipped me the bird. So, you know, that just lit the fire under my ass a little right. bit. Right. So. You know it's on purpose now. You've established. So, as I come around the side of the ball house, I noticed that three out of the four tip-ups that she hit were totally destroyed. Right. And you had nice tip-ups, too. Were they, were they um, like jack traps or... Uh... No, they were um, heritage, some older <laughs> heritage. And one of them was so old, my father-in-law is that now deceased, and I, I like to use some of the old-style ones. And ironically enough, that was the only one that she hit that didn't get destroyed. God. <laughs> so, yeah, it was kind of weird how that happened. Yeah. So, as I'm chasing her around the ice, she she comes right at me. And I'm like, lady, you're crazy. You know, continue to give me the bird. So, oh I'm trying to figure out where she came on the ice. My son is trying to get my 11-year-old into the Bob house where we thought it was safe. He gets her in. He's like, maybe this isn't the safest place. You know, it's, it's a big target. So he, he gets her over on the wood line, and I'm chasing her around. You know, I can only I can only imagine what I look like out there. <laughs> hey, hey. Running behind a car screaming. <laughs> you, you know, and, and she's, she's smiling away and giving me the bird, and she went all the way to the other end of the pond where the brook comes in. And I'm like, well, if she goes through, I'll at least be able to catch her. Right. <laughs> While this all, I'm trying, I have my phone, I have it on camera, I'm trying to get a picture of her license plate every time she goes by. And so, and I, I never, I never was able to get a picture of that license plate. So she takes off. I'm, I'm on the phone with 911. We got dispatch, you know, we're en route, got three and a half minutes out. It's great. She leaves. I'm like, oh, great. They're never going to catch her. Right. So my son dukes of hazards in his truck. He takes off after her, and the cop pulls in. I'm like, you're about two minutes too late. She just left heading that way, heading towards Harrisville, which, I mean, anyone who knows the area, there's like four main roads. So my son catches up with her, and she's just putting along. She she realizes she'd be being chased, so she pulls over. Cop pulls in. While this is all going on, away from the pond, Another officer comes in, and he, you know, he introduces himself, you know, what's damaged. By this time, I'm, I'm all picked up. I have all my broken tip-ups in my sled. You know, I'm thinking, I got to, you know, I got to be out of here in less than an hour to go to a Super Bowl party. Put all the tip-ups back where they were. You know, my, I'm trying to calm my daughter down. And he gets a call from the pursuing officer and says, she just took off on me. So now oh. that... Now, now you got two cruisers chasing this lady. My son calls me and says, hey, Dad, the cop still has my driver's license. What do I do? I said, well, don't wait there. Who knows how long it's going to take? Come back and do some fishing. Right. So, so he comes back. A couple hours later, the, the cop calls us and said, you know, we apprehended her. She's being processed, blah, blah, blah. You know, and I, I've done a couple of these interviews now, um, and I can honestly say... Sportsmen stick together. They sure do. You know, I, I the first the first gentleman owns a sports shop up in Maine someplace. He offered me a, you know, he says, "Come on up. I don't know how far away from Maine you are. Come on up. I'll give you a whole new set." And, you know, I got I think I've got twelve tip ups in my basement right now. That I, I said, "Hey, you know what? Give them to a kid." Yeah. Give them to a kid. Next guy that comes in wants to take his kid fishing. Give him a set. Tell them thanks a lot. It's the only way we're going to be able to stay out there with with all the uh, tree huggers and everything else. And and that's what I thought this whole thing was. I thought right. it was an anti. Well, it's funny because I'm a I'm a super conservationist tree hugger. I am like all the way tree hugger on most issues, except for I like, I like hunting and fishing stuff. I was uh, told yesterday when we were at the police station filling out a report. That she was a lady that just had a mental breakdown. She had no idea what she was doing or where she was. Wow. So, so she could die just with crazy. Right? I'm a bleeding heart. So you know, now I'm I'm going from upset at this lady right. to really feeling bad for her, you know. I don't know, it's it's just I don't know. Maybe it. Maybe it's just I'm getting older and I'm getting softer, and 
I it's feel. okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if we, if we just like all the sportsmen who reached out to you, uh, and you're just like them, you, you're going to err on the side of kindness. You're going to think about other people, and yep. so you have empathy built in. And so yeah, you think, yeah. all right, well, she wasn't it wasn't personal. You right, know? right. And so therefore, you can you can give her that benefit of the empathy. Um, so what's going to happen to her? She got charged with criminal mischief. Yeah, there's there's several charges. Um, Fishing game kind of stepped back from this this whole thing because um, it's a motor vehicle was used. You know, if it was a four wheeler or a snowmobile, they'd be they'd head the case. But yes. right now, um, they're charging her with a couple of charges: it was criminal mischief and maybe criminal liability or, or whatever it may be. Yeah. Um, they, they're going to pursue those two charges or three charges, whatever, whatever it might be, and um, restitution for my for my equipment. So like about five hundred bucks in damage. Yeah, it, and I didn't even know that she had hit my auger at first. Actually, what, what kind of auger was it? It's a um, just a, an older Strike Master, yeah. uh, ten inch. You know, it's a good running machine. Actually, it's weird because my son wants me to go. Um, he wants me to go electronic. That's know, what I, have. Of, I, I use a six-inch nil with a uh, with a uh, Dewalt drill on it, and I can't imagine <laughs> ever using gas again. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I like smelling like two strokes. So hey, you know, if it ever makes a hole in the ice, that's my attitude. Get right? No fishing. Yeah. So uh, maybe maybe this is going to push me towards. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think I'm going to still stick with the two-stroke, but mm -hmm. I really like the new Strike Masters or maybe even an Eskimo. Well, well, that's good, um, and I'm glad that you're not out for revenge either because that's, that, you know, nope. it's always disappointing when people get that, you know, trying to get even never works out. So, yeah, for sure. Um, there, there was a little bit of Facebook feedback on the Fish Nerds page where I posted this story this morning. And uh, the biggest question was, who the hell spends $45 on tip-ups? So, that was <laughs> <Wow. laughs> Listen, they, they, when you figure in the price of line oh, yeah. and leaders and hooks and, you know, you're talking, that that's on the low side. Oh, I know. I, I, it was put up there as a joke. And it's funny for me because I've never bought new tip-ups in my life and I rarely use tip-ups. Um, I, I buy them at yard sales, and I spend like two bucks a piece on them. They come with a string, and I use them right. a times a year, and it's fine. Um, but, yeah, but they can, good ones uh, can be expensive. I, I interviewed the owner of the Heritage Company last week, and, I mean, his traps are 50 bucks a piece. And, right. And that's now. You know, 20 years ago, they are probably 20 yeah. bucks a piece. So um, it happens. My, my next set, I'm really looking for jack traps. So. Yeah, well, I have two of those. And hopefully nobody runs those over, and they'll last me the rest of my life, and they'll be handed down to my kids. Yeah, and hopefully your kids will get over their fear of cars on the ice. I heard that your daughter was pretty shaken up by this whole thing. Yeah, she's. I, I want her to go out there with me on Saturday, and uh, actually she's she's sitting right beside me right now, shaking her head no. Not this time. Well, I have. Uh, I also have an eleven year old daughter who ice fishes, and uh, and I say. Tell her to suck it up, Buttercup, and <laughs> get back out there. <laughs> it's not going to happen again. Odds of that, you know, she'll be fine. Does she like oh, yeah. fishing normally? Can I talk to her? Oh, yeah, she's right here. Go ahead. Yeah, what's, what, hey, Madeline, how's it going? Good. But I want to hear your opinion of what happened yesterday. What did you think of this lady driving around the ice? I was scared. You were scared? And what was your, like, what was your thought process like? What were you thinking? That my dad was going to get hit. Yeah, that is scary. And uh, do you like fishing with your dad? Yeah. Not anymore. <laughs> well, I'll still like it. I'll just be scared most of the time. Yeah, I think you're gonna be okay. Are you 11 years old? Yeah. Are you in fifth or sixth grade? Fifth. Right. And two. I have an 11 year old daughter who's also in fifth grade who also likes to ice fish. And so I think I'm gonna have to invite you guys to come up and fish with us, or I'm gonna come down there with my daughter. And we're going to fish with you sometime. Is that okay? Yeah. Excellent. That'd and be we'll great. Get, and we'll get over our, uh, our over our trepidation. We'll catch some really cool fish. <laughs> or maybe we can meet in the middle, like I'm going to Pasaki for a white perch adventure or something cool. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. So that'll be good. All right. You guys are officially invited to fish with us. All right. We'll, we'll work that out later. Thank you so much for um, 
James, for putting some time with me today and, and telling us a story. It's always fun to go right to the source for these things. Well, I, I want to thank you for reaching out. And, uh, you know, it, like I said, the sportsmen make it. They sure do. They sure. And women. Come on, you got a daughter, right? Oh, there. of course, the woman. I, I actually <laughs> had more women. The women were more upset than most of the guys about this. Hang on. So Damon, Damon is telling us about the story about him catching a 22-inch Laker during the Winnipesaukee Derby. Yeah, so it was about 22 inches, if I remember. It was a few years ago. I was fishing with my uncle. And it was a really awful Friday with um, a lot of chop and it was cold and I don't think a lot of people were fishing. So this 22-inch lake trout, which is nothing special at all. Um, Shut up. Shut up. A 22 inch lake trout is very special. It's very special, very special. <laughs> it was a very special trout. Not, we didn't have high hopes for it at the Derby because there are more special lake trout out there, but um, no. it was the it was the second largest lake trout of, of the Friday of that Winnie Derby. And I was able to win $200 worth of fishing gear. And you ate the laker? And I ate the laker. I tried to. How did you cook it? Um, just tried to kind of play it and put it in the oven for a while and I'm not really scientific, scientific. <laughs> yeah so I, I it, it was it was not great I, I prefer a smaller trout like a, you know a small brook trout or something because yeah. they cook faster so just for the record on the record Damon says he only likes to eat small native uh, brookies well <laughs> suck on that Saco Valley Trout Unlimited <laughs> I had a really tasty brookie out of uh, Connor Pond. It was very small, but I have to leave now. I think. Are you Are you a member? I, I might be a member. I don't know. I didn't say native. I just said small. Oh, but delete that part. Okay. Hey, uh, speaking of, of small fishes, we got to stump the fish nerds question, and uh, I'm going to play that right now. Hey nerds, it's Amazing James out here in sunny California. Some of you may know that I used to live in Baltimore, Maryland. I was there for about nine years. Lovely place on a Chesapeake Bay. Anyway, some friends recently stopped over for dinner, and uh, they also hail from Baltimore, and I was brought uh, back a memory of a thing called lake trout that is very, very popular in Baltimore, Maryland. Lots of little shops in the city sell what they call fried lake trout. Now, to my knowledge, there's no such thing as lake trout in the state of Maryland. So I'm curious to know, what is a lake trout in Baltimore, Maryland? Okay, so in case it wasn't clear what the question was, in Maryland, in Maryland they served, they served lake trout nuggets at lots of different restaurants along the coast. What fish are they serving as lake trout in Maryland, that's the question. Crab. What do you think it is? I don't know. Crab? It's a crab. <laughs> it's rainbow trout. Rainbow I trout. It's rainbow trout. Yeah. Oh, we got a hit. See, know. while we're recording, we're fishing, so uh, we think oh, we might have. Oh, got it. We caught ice. What do you think, Damon? Oh, I have no idea. I also can't fish. Right, I'll give you a hint. It's it's Maryland, so it's got to be an ocean fish. It's what? Uh, Pollock. Pollock. It's a good guess. Pollock's a good guess. I'll go with that. Yeah, what do you think? Mackerel. Mackerel. Uh, it's uh, Actually, it's whiting. Whiting, that's whiting. It's whiting, which are actually very delicious fish, but if they sell them as whiting, no one will buy them. They sell them as imitation crab meat a lot. Why? Are whiting ugly? Like, what's wrong with whiting? They're just a, they're delicious. They're cool looking little fish, but they're, you know, think about like eating like manhaden or some sort of other bait fish. It's just marketing is a problem with fish those fish. Fish is the strangest animal in the whole world. Like, it's, it just makes no sense. Are they another cod? Are whiting in the cod family? They've I got a little chin thing, don't they? I, you know, I believe whiting do have a little chin thing. I'm not convinced they're in the cod family. After when you look at them, they just they look like a very different kind of fish. But that's one of the traits. <laughs> so good, good point though. I think you win that argument. You can the whiting cod. If it has a beard. It tastes good. Yeah, they should call it the bearded cod. <laughs> You shouldn't call anything a bearded cod. <laughs> 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 we were just crossing. Show me, show me your bearded cod. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Totally so that... innocent. We're talking about the little barbell. We're going to hell.
Yeah, it's a barbel. Now, I wonder, like, um, like catfish have taste buds all over their whole body. And I wonder, like, when you hold them, so you hold a catfish, they're tasting you. And I wonder if that's the same with um, with the codfishes. Not bullhead. <laughs> yeah, bullhead, too. <laughs> no, they're different. They've only got a few tasters. Only on your thumbs, on the bullhead thumbs. <laughs> Alright, as you heard earlier, speaking of dangerous people, this episode is brought to you by uh, Health IQ. Health IQ uses science and data to secure lower rates on life insurance for health conscious people like runners, cyclists, strength trainers, vegans, and more. Fishermen, fisher people can also be thought of as healthy people. 56% of Health IQ customers save up to one third on their life insurance, saving money. Uh, on car insurance for being a good driver, same similar thing. Health IQ can save you money on your life insurance for living a healthy, conscious life. If you run a marathon, you probably qualify. If you're a triathlete, you probably qualify. If you walk 25 miles to go catch a fish, you probably qualify. Uh, it's simple. Head to healthiq.fnfp, healthiq.com slash fnfp, Fish Nerds Fishing Podcast. Take the quiz and you are in the game. Uh, Trustpilot.com uh, rated Health IQ 9.6 out of 10. Uh, our friend Ryan Hall said it's perfect because it's made for people like me with healthy, active lifestyles that lower health rates that many pro athletes have have can sometimes that can sometimes negatively affect uh, their insurance rates. Health IQ uh, uses this active lifestyle as an asset to get good life insurance uh, as opposed to it being a detriment. So healthiq.com slash fnfp healthiq.com slash fnfp uh, and uh, we're happy to have them sponsoring us we need sponsors like them and the show is also brought to you by our listeners if you want to support the show and you should if you like this we're asking all listeners to donate a dollar an episode go to patreon.com p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash fishners and give us a dollar an episode it's four dollars a month to help keep this show going this show costs me money every month. I lose money every month trying to make the fish nurse for you, and we need to do better. Uh, if you give us a buck, we'll be our best friend. Two bucks, I'll send you a boo rag. Uh, five bucks an episode, you get a fish nerd's hat. And if you give us $25, which is a lot of money, I will mention your business and website here on the show. This week, uh, Josh Lopes from LopesTax.com gave us 25 bucks. So, if you want your taxes done or help on your finances and you're in Massachusetts or New England, go to Lopes, L-O-P-E-S, tax.com. Reach out to Josh Lopes. Tell him the Fish Nerds sent you. Otherwise, go to patreon.com. Look for the Fish Nerds and give us a dollar. Now, back to the show. And this is where we get back into the shanty. Uh, and it's rowdy and gross. And uh, we're going to eat some some tinned fish. You're going to hear voices in here. And I listening back, I did not do a good job introducing all the characters. So, of course, you're going to have me, Clay Groves. Uh, you're going to have Damon uh, Steer, who is a reporter from the Conway Daily Sun. He had come out with us on a cusk fishing trip. Uh, that failed because of bad weather. Vinny Maturo, who owns Ben and Jerry's and is one of my partners in the Fish Nerds uh, Guide Service, uh, is there with us. And, of course, we have our fly fishing correspondent, correspondent Rich Collins, there as well. So those are the four voices. You're also going to hear us dumping stuff down uh, through the floor. We have holes drilled in the shanty, and we are... As we taste the tinned fish, we are dumping them down the fishing holes, uh, hopefully to attract fish in. Uh, and here's the show. We got Damon here. Damon, what do you think we're about to do? What we're about to do is uh, get colder, right. and he's going to do something with tinned fish. With tinned fish. Now, those uh, longtime listeners remember last year, we spent time drinking whiskey and eating tinned fish at Rich's Pad up in Intervale, New Hampshire. Uh, Rich didn't like the cooking of tinned fish. He thinks it was uh, unpoetic and uh, a little bit blasphemous. Blasphemous, uh, and and not uh, an accurate depiction of how to eat tinned fish. So, Rich has purchased a variety of tinned fishes, and we're going to do a little taste testing today. And uh, as we eat them, we're actually going to dump the leftovers down the ice fishing holes <laughs> to chum for Lakers. Vinny, you got the stomach for this today? I do. Yeah. 
I only almost lost it on one last time. <laughs> was, it, was it the uh, squid and its ink? No, it was the paste, the shrimp paste. Oh, oh I got it again. <laughs> I could not, that, no, that one could not go down. I'd like to point out that there is a cut up sucker right here by our tin fish that looks just like the tin fish. So. I bet it tastes just like it. So what do we got here? Well, we got a little bit of everything today. Um, I went a little bit upscale this this year because, you know, it was a good year. For Rich is always upscale. So we, <laughs> we didn't go to the, uh, the Asian market and get the absolute cheapest things we can find. I've been picking these up in uh, various places around the, around the world here. <laughs> um, but this one's a little bit gross. Kuang Ta Xiang. Fried fish paste. My apologies to anyone who speaks whatever language that was. Yeah, I'm just reading it. But <laughs> fish paste sounds really interesting, and it's got, uh, oh, tuna fish, water, soybean oil, sugar, chili sauce, and miso. That didn't sound too bad. No, these things are supposed to be human food, right? Yes, these they aren't are like for your cat or something. No, they are for human consumption. Yeah, they are for human I consumption. I just want to make sure that. Or even human food. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know that one sounded like human food, this but one, I didn't know about these others. This one's real good. Healthy Tuna Project. Um, Dong Wan. Fish and soybean. Rice oil. Selenium. All right, let's... Waiting. Boy, you really went all out. And not just those three. There's... No, no, there's, oh, there's no. a bag full. All right, we're live on Facebook now. Uh, here we are. Hi, hi everybody. Uh, I'm Clay from Fish Nerds. With me uh, here in the shack on Silver Lake. You can hear the wind. Uh, we have uh, Rich Collins. Rich, say hi. Hey, absolutely frozen. You look beautiful in your aviators today. Over here we have uh, Damon. Damon, say hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Vinny. Hello. That's how Vinny smiles. <laughs> Damon wasn't okay. aware that we were having Tin Fish Challenge, Big which secret. makes it better. Yeah. You can see outside it's terrible. Ooh, oh, someone's coming. Did they just crash? No. Ah, oh, it's too bad. How can they go that fast? They have a very fast snowmobile. Lots That's of herring freezing. stuff. Yeah, maybe that's why they're in a hurry. All right, so um, what are we tasting first? Well, so let's start with something nice and uh, Should it innocuous. Should the other way? Just film it. Right. <laughs> so who are you typing first here? We got boneless, skinless mackerel. Yeah, let's start innocuous with some wild caught. So you know, very uh, environmentally friendly. Yeah, is there are there known to be mackerel farms? <laughs> Sure. <laughs> We're getting a question. What happened to the tusk lines? Do you want to answer that? Yeah, uh, nothing. We almost died collecting them because it was so cold. Who asked that question? Mike? Uh, Mike's definitely yeah, Mike, it was cold. He just wants to count. He just wants to know how many. Yeah, this is Silver Lake, Mike. It's not, not your easy Winnipesaukee. All you, <laughs> all you babies out there with the easy fishing. <laughs> oh, oh, look at that. Truly look insane. at that. Oh, mm. Mm. Nice. It actually looks pretty good. Yeah. Um, you gonna dump some oil, oil down the hole there? Oil down it's the not going down the hole. The hole's frozen. The hole's frozen already. Oh, my rod's gonna be all gooed up. Um, you know what? I think just put it on a plate and everyone get a fork and pass the plate around. I don't think there's any point no in crackers, serving right? it. The crackers were kind of the saving grace. I forgot the crackers, so we're gonna be <laughs> taking this as is. There's your fork, Damon. Absolutely. Now, Worst do you have to finish ever. each fish? No. No, no, no. <laughs> no. You have to taste it. You have to taste fish. it and report. So, uh, so right now, for those listening, Rich is about to taste the mackerel. It actually looks closer. pretty good from tra 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 yeah, tra Trader Joe's. Trader right. Joe's does a good job. So the, um, what do you call the uh, bloodline? Fat, yeah. I don't really like bloodline on any fish, and this is loaded with it because it's mackerel, but oh, it's, it's full of bloodline. Full of bloodline. Oil, right? yeah. So let's see. Let's give it a whirl. Oh, that's actually good. Not bad. I think I'm going to go next. You want to hold that? All right, I'm in. All right. I'm in. There you go. Oh, that's not offensive at all. You know, that tastes like tuna fish. It does smell like tuna. Oh. All right. That's not bad. <laughs> Everything Everyone goes for it. Vinny? Like Ugh. Actually, once I swallow it, it's less good. It's not as good as tuna. No. no way. That's not terrible. No, it's not gross. That's not a sandwich and mayonnaise. Yeah. What do you think, Vinny? Who wants to? Oh. It's very tuna fishy. Ah. Not terrible. Luckily it's cold, so... <laughs> it's cracker and a mayo would be good. It's cracker and a mayo would be fantastic. It's kind of like that beer, that ubiquitous beer that tastes good when it's cold. It's no, it's not bad. Not bad. All right. Anyone want seconds or we can dump that down the hole? I'm good. All right. Let's dump it down the hole. Here we go. Goodbye. Jum. I gotta look right down here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, uh, who phone? left their phone on? My wife's calling. Podcast faux pas. 
go. Let's go sardines. Also, Trader Joe's wild caught, skinless, boneless sardines and olive oil. Sardine. Um, Jack giant sardine. Little fuck. Sabikis. Sabikis. With 50 pound bird. Oh yeah. You know, I don't. I wouldn't put that on a plate at all. I think just pass the. Yeah. Game. Plates oh, are. My life's ended. Here we go. We're back by again. Plates are kind of high, bro. Yeah. This is this is fishing out of a shack. All right. This doesn't look too bad. They're a little a little mushy. Mm. Now, does anybody win anything at the end of this? Or is no, this well, this is just for. You might win a fish with chumming the holes with this stuff. Okay, so I don't like sardines. <laughs> I don't like anything about them. They're, They're mealy. <laughs> These aren't salty. No. <laughs> yeah, I just don't like them. <laughs> oh, good I job. Never have. Well done. All right, here you can take the camera. And now I'm gonna go for it. All right. They're not offensive in any way. They're just. I don't know. You look offended. Oh, I don't like them at all. Oh, you don't like them either? No. Mm -mm. Oh. Uh -uh. They're not is most sardines have more flavor. Right. Those are just salt to death out of flavorless. Them. Oh yeah, I love salt. They taste like rubber uh, rubber. Rubbers. How big a sample are you guys using? Uh, as much as you can fit on the floor. It's not good, but it's not <laughs> <laughs> right, it's not like awful. It's not awful, it's just not good. I agree with this. Oh, man. It's like fast food when it's cold. It's like it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's just not good. Well, cold french fries are terrible. So it's cold sardines. I don't think I need a cold burger. Yeah, it doesn't like really taste like much of anything. Like and you, if you're starving, you'd be happy to eat those. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. More yeah, chum. Weird. More chum. All right. Down the hole. Best part. I keep missing the hole. <laughs> so gross. Enjoy your life. <laughs> <laughs> what are going to do? How many in total do we have here? Thirty. Oh, six more. <laughs> so eight total. <laughs> we survived two, and we went pretty easy. So well, let's do something that has some flavor to it. All right. Fried um, dace. What's fried dace. I love it. All right. This one terrifies me. Did because you take a picture of that? <laughs> the uh, the tin is so cheap. Like it. It's like it's like paper. Now this. Now you got this out. Uh, uh, where did you get this? I have no idea, actually. I don't remember. Now, I just kept picking it up. Now, did you guys see the Simpsons episode uh, about Fugu? No. Is that the... Uh, yes, I think I saw that one. Homer, Homer eats the Fugu and and uh, he thinks he's going to die. <laughs> oh, is that the... Um, the... Pufferfish? Yeah. Yes. I just forgot what Fugu meant. <laughs> Me too, and I'm like, I can see it in my head and I can see Homer eating it. Like, so hopefully there isn't some directions in there that says you have to cook it, like, or take a special, uh, preparation. Oh, method. no. This is, like, peasant food, China, time-honored brand, Guanggong Cannery. And it's got a little picture of a, what we're using as bait, basically. Um, this is fried dace. Fried dace. Peel that top back. Let's do this. Oh, yum. Um, yeah, and the tin is so cheap, it's like aluminum foil. This is just pure bargain food. I wonder if most people, you know, heat these. Oh! 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 <laughs> let me just describe this uh, horror it show. Like it looks like it, it, It's like if you polish a turd. <laughs> if you just like really shiny poo. Put soybean oil on it. Oh, that's oh, gross. Uh, Can't wait. <laughs> we might need a new more video. <laughs> yeah, we should video this oh. one. This might just be just straight to video. Oh, we're live again. I didn't know that. <laughs> hey, I had no idea we were live. Mm. Mm. Oh, it's slippery, too. Oh, there's a fin. Oh, I hate that. Oh, 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 oh yes. Oh, that is the most awful looking. Oh. <laughs> I don't want to puke. <laughs> uh, if you do, puke that way. If you puke, yeah, yeah right down the Oh, wall. man, the skin's on it, the <laughs> fins are on it. Oh, it's like uh, ginger. It's all dried out and hard. 
Can I, right out, can I swear? It's fucking you can nasty. See, I, am, I am upset already. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> hey, you're insulting. Entire cultures call this food. No. Oh. I don't like it. <laughs> they probably... Well, maybe... I don't know what they do, but maybe they... Oh, dress it up. <laughs> dress it up? <laughs> There's bones and chunks of... Oh. That's a big dish. That's a huge taste. Maybe it's unfolded. Maybe I don't it's think just it's like a the fish. two sides. <laughs> the base yeah. uh, carpet. Mm -hmm. Alright. I think it's. Oh. Alright, let's go. Do it. If That's can... a big chunk. You're, you're oh, oh your the fins are all over it. <laughs> don't wreck it for the rest of us. <laughs> That's a big. Claws goes for a giant chunk. Our bones. He's not conservative at all. He just knows it. How was it? <laughs> it's like jerky, but gross. <laughs> oh, that's so. Alright. That's really uh, bad. Alright. That explains why it was so cheap. I don't think. Alright, I'm going. Showing for this now. Oh, that's going to be a great jump. Oh, it oh. looks exactly like. Look at the fins on that thing. It's just. Do you think yeah. people just. That's like. That's the anal fin. I don't know how to get out of the can. It, it's, yeah, it's like, it doesn't want to go on a fork. All right. Delicious. <laughs> oh. The consistency is terrible. Uh. There you go. <laughs> it's awful. Oh, I can see your breath. Ugh. Ah, it's like spicy or something, but yeah. not, um... Ah. It's like weak spicy. Ah. Good! Ah. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Stefan's just asking oh. how many cusps we got. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. That's, that's just not even... <clears throat> that's not even food. That's actually meaty. It's got a it's, meat texture. It's jerky, right? Yeah. It's like they dry it out, or maybe just rot it on the boat. Uh -oh. I think Damon no, likes it. Damon likes it. I don't actually don't mind that. <laughs> no, I didn't. There's something aftertaste with that. Yeah. I, I don't hate that. You don't hate it? No. You want some more? <laughs> Going down the hole. Oh, it sinks nicely. It's actually not bad. Very good. I didn't like it at all. I didn't like that. It kind of hit me for a minute. Ah. Uh, hit you. No, I'm over it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Here you go. That's a smelly burp. Oh, oh. want me to save you some? No, no, I'm alright, but I definitely wouldn't mind eating that. Like, <laughs> Look at that. Well, if I had, if I was dying, I bet I would. Oh, yeah. Dying in real poor. Oh, oh, oh you missed. missed. <laughs> Ugh. Every coyote for I just miles. lost. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> There's a fish. <laughs> We're marking fish on the sonar. All right, let's finish this. Uh, Boy. All right, uh, so just an uh, update. Uh, we're about halfway done. And uh, so far, no one's died. And we've not seen a fish in hours. And, uh, you know, I, I think someone's going to die tonight on the ice. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Could be the very last Fish Nerds podcast. Uh, there are at least two correspondents on this boat. <laughs> we have five left. All right. Oh my God. You want to go with something tasty? I think this tuna is going to be tasty. Yeah, let's do yeah, something, let's something tasty. Do something tasty. Yeah, I, think, I think that I cleansed the palate. All right. So this is Healthy Tuna Project. So it's a project. So you know it's good. And it looks like a fancier can. It is. Yeah, yeah. This can is not made of tin foil. Um, it's got healthy looking things on it. A little one. piece of lemon. Yeah, this might just be really nice tuna. Might be. Can you guys see the uh, oh. the bait on your sonar, the jump? Oh yeah. Yeah. Can you see the fish on Silver Lake chasing it? Um no. no. So this is just tuna fish. This is probably really good. I think I marked the fish though. 
be honest. How can you tell the difference between some pieces of That's the, just good tuna. Because the fish come up from I the like bottom. that. Uh, the chum is falling. No. This time pass it to Damon. Damon. Alright. Have a refreshing healthy tuna problem. Alright. That's actually not offensive in any way. No. And that's good? I uh, could use some mayonnaise, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, what couldn't? Mayonnaise or barbecue sauce. Barbecue Ooh, sauce? I never had barbecue No, sauce not on tuna, but I'm just saying barbecue sauce in general. Oh, it sounds good now you well, say ketchup, it. yeah. Ketchup on anything. What do you think, Vinny? Yeah, it's tuna fish. Yeah, Vinny likes to eat. That's not bad at all. All right, I'm up. I wonder if that taste would be any better without this ginger sauce. Uh, probably. The taste would never be better. <laughs> Vinny, Vinny liked it. Vinny's faking. No? Uh, it's delicious. That's really good. So I think this one's from Seattle, the Asian market in Seattle. I yeah, my wife had to be. Because it, it tastes like food. <laughs> it is food. <laughs> That's really good. I'm not sure I wind up down the hall. Yeah, we might need save it. that one. We might be dying later and need to eat it. Well, I'm hungry. Well, not for long. You did put it right next to the, uh, <laughs> the little bits of sucker <laughs> that were on the All right. All right. Next. Hey. All right. We had some good. You want to go for some gross? Um, yeah. I think we should finish on a good one. All right. The, well, this is, look at this one. Okay. White tuna belly. This, All I right. think this costs money. Get in my tuna belly. So, we'll finish on that one. You know what, Clay? You're a good guy. I like, <laughs> I like you a lot. But, you know, th this might be evidence that you should never take your guiding company um, public. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're not catching fish, but we're laughing. <laughs> stocks, uh, Clay stocks down, crashing <laughs> below the bottom of Silver Lake. You know, when you consider what Joe Rogan did, uh, Fear Factor, this is there you like No, that. this is oh. very tame. Oh, I got effects. I didn't mean to do that. Oh. <laughs> You're going to let the clown All right, this, this is Vinny's favorite. Uh, uh, fried fish paste. That's that noise. <laughs> hey, Fish Guy Josh is watching. Hey, Fish Guy Josh. I'm a little concerned about that one. Oh, I wouldn't be too concerned. No, about you gotta that be one. concerned about So this one isn't too bad because it's tuna. It's got garlic and ginger, star anise powder. That could be good. Um, no, it's not. I think it's pretty good. You ever change baby diaper? <laughs> oh yeah, that is definitely is that baby a... diaper. Oh, oh yeah, right. nice. Let's get some of the oil out of there. Oh, I don't that. Ugh. <laughs> that looks like cat food. So That's gross. the one I couldn't get down. <laughs> this is a different. Ooh. Oh. Oh, that's consistency of. Oh, well, that's... I wish I had brought crackers. I'm sorry. That is baby yeah. shit. Oh. Now, how is it? What's your report? It's chunky. Uh huh. And it's tough. Uh huh. And it's. It's not offensive. Uh huh. It's just the texture of baby shit. For those of us who have never eaten baby shit, um... It's like an avocado. <laughs> a little, a little bone or something. A little thin. Uh -huh. A little eyeball. Um, yeah, that's basically what they grind up at the end of when they take out the grown-up right, fish. Pass it on, David. I'm the best. Alright. You gave me so much to look forward to, Rich. I just had one come up on me here. <laughs> Vinny's still fishing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I bet this chum actually brings in some fish. Or scares them away. It'll do something. All Go right. for it. <laughs> All right. That one's on the more offensive side. Well, this is the one. Well, I think the hardest part is you don't know what to expect exactly. Right. It looks like <laughs> the grossest thing in the world. <laughs> This is the one that gets Vinny and he's trying to catch a fish. There's one on my screen right now. <laughs> you sure it's not a hunk of chum? Yeah, because chum doesn't float up from the bottom. <laughs> chum doesn't float. <laughs> my chum does. <laughs> Famous last words, chum doesn't float. Oh, it's going away. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That definitely is oh, baby I don't want diaper. This. That's cat food <laughs> nastiness.
I wouldn't even give that to my cat. Your cat would eat it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> All right. Oh! <laughs> Holy shit. That stuff. He's totally turned into some kind of weird, creepy clown. He's been... Ah, there it is. Oh, I don't like the clown. Oh, my God. Man, that's awful. That is the worst thing. Oh my god. What do they do with that? They, do they just mix grind it in with... up every... It's chum. It's no, but same... what do you do with it? Do you mix it in with... <laughs> you put it what on do you mix that with? Hell. Dude, you're a, you're a weird... Do you... <laughs> put it in... <laughs> that came out nice. Yeah. Uh, man, let's not do that one again. Uh, the shrimp go. paste was worse, actually. That was not the stuff. Yeah, that was fish paste. Uh, uh, three more? The shrimp paste was... Uh, seven more. Seven, seven more. more. Yeah. It looks gross. All right, what's next? All right. All right. Next, we're gonna go. We're gonna kick it up a notch. Cabo de Peñas. Mm. <laughs> Grand Selection. Um, so these oh, are like baby the eels. Oh, yeah, it's is that even legal? Stuff yes, because the they're from Spain. You can eat anything in Spain, even Spanish people. Delicious. <coughs> Oh, oh, baby Oh, I don't like this. I don't feel good about this one. Oh, look at the picture. They put some mussels in it. To well, where are the mussels? Oh. oh, man. They're real eels. They look like noodles. Oh, they look like noodles, but they don't, they don't move like noodles. They move like eels. Oh, they look awful. I don't like this one. I'm glad you're going first. I don't like this at all. Pack a lip. Like it's uh, <laughs> some dip in there. No, I don't like this. <laughs> oh, they, they don't taste bad, but they don't work. <laughs> they get in your teeth and they... Oh! Oh! Why would you want that? Oh, they're like worms. <laughs> David, you're next. <laughs> oh my god, I can't describe the color. It's mealy, but yet it's soft and gummy bear like. Oh. This is like sluggos. <coughs> Except sluggos have resistance. Like. like, honestly, what is this? Those are eels. But I, don't, I just don't understand. Like, there's no. They're baby eels. Is there a head on them? <laughs> no, they chop them off. I just say I don't see the head because I think the heads have teeth. All right, do I have to chew it? I don't care how you eat it. <laughs> no, it tastes like that. No, but the texture. <laughs> we are offensive. There's like ten thousand dead animals in that game. They really are. They are weird looking. They don't look like something that's a, that's been alive. Yeah, it kind of does. They still look alive. Kind of looks... kind of roll them up like spaghetti. Uh, they look like fake. They look like slug goes. <laughs> yeah. Put them on a hook. Vinny's Italian. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they got a kind of good aftertaste. Right. They don't really taste like anything. Yeah, they don't taste bad at all. They look like bean turds. <laughs> like what? Oh, I think they're bean turds. They just don't like the way they. I'm not even sure they're either mouth. real. Yeah, they're weird. They're tentacles without the suction cup. Maybe they're soybean paste. I think I think they're soy gross. <laughs> Baby soy God, they're, just, they're so horrible. They're just rubber. <laughs> they're so offensive. They're Look at that. Fake. <laughs> it's so offensive. I wish they had little heads so you could uh, see their eyes. I, I'm glad they don't have a little head. <laughs> I don't like them at all. They get stuck in your teeth. No, those are chum. No, nope. chum. I wonder if there are people from other cultures who would just turn up their nose at fried smell. Oh, of course. Uh, of course they would. Yeah. Beef. Oh. I mean, beef. Some people don't like beef. Yeah. Cows are sacred. Nobody thinks eels are sacred. Uh. Hey, I do. Yeah, not my religion. Oh, that's upsetting. <laughs> Someone mentioned the finless brown on the... <laughs> Twice. That's <laughs> come up. Uh. All right. All right. Cleanse the palate with some beer. 
I think they're like Berkeley's throwaways or something. Like All right. That. Well, uh, anyway, that's the uh, this year's Tin Fish special, and uh, we hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if we got a fish, we'll turn this back on and we'll talk more about fish. But uh, thank you guys for uh, participating in this terrible uh, event. Oh, the eels are all gobbled up in my throat. Oh, they're not sinking. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right, we're done. Soon. <laughs> better hope those things are dead, because, you know, we might have just introduced the <laughs> basic <laughs> So that's it. You've listened to a whole bunch of fish nerds and, and gross people when you should have been fishing. Big thanks to my family for supporting me while I podcast, go on fishing quests, and do all sorts of silly things that nerds do. Big fat thank you to our fat friends, uh, Rich Collins, Damon Steer, and Vinny. Uh, also, special thank you to James for uh, pick, taking time out today to tell me about his, uh, his near-death ice fishing experience. Uh, and, and really, you know, a heartfelt thank you to all the weird fish that, that died for our tinned sins. Um, you know, you'll be missed, our tinned sins fish. Until next time, follow the code of the fish nerds. Spawn early and often. <sighs> Avoid free lunches with strings attached. And swim against the current every chance you get.